Welcome to Import-Export for ICMS. This course will teach you how to import and export catalog records in ICMS. The basic navigation video course is a prerequisite for this training. All of the information we'll cover in this course is also available in other places. Chapter 1 of the ICMS User Manual covers system basics. Chapter 8, Moving and Sharing Data, explains the import and export functions. All DOI units using ICMS should already have a copy of the manual. It is also available in PDF format on the Rediscovery FTP site, ftp.rediscov.com forward slash ICMS, and on the DOI Museum Program website, www.doi.gov forward slash museum forward slash ICMS. We strongly recommend you refer to the user manual as you use ICMS. The Rediscovery website also includes several white papers to help you with importing and exporting data to and from Excel and Access, and specific help for importing natural history records. Also, the online system help includes a section on import-export. Let's get started. After login, you'll start at the home page. From the home page, you can go anywhere in the program. Some functions are available immediately from the home page. Others are available only when you're working with records in the database. One function available from anywhere is the System Help. It includes a chapter on Tools and System Maintenance, which includes a section on Import-Export. The System Help does not include details on data format and field usage. You will find that information in the ICMS User Manual. White papers available on the Rediscovery website under Support and Frequent Questions are also helpful for importing. We'll use the Natural History Catalog Records for this lesson, but the feature works the same in Cultural Resources Catalog Records. Navigate to the Natural History Directory and into Catalog Records. We'll start by learning how to export data from ICMS. There are a couple of ways to do it, and you can export data into several file formats. The method you use depends on what the recipient needs to do with the exported data. The first step in exporting is to define which records you want to export. There are several ways to do this, such as using search, filters, and tags. The best method depends on what records and data you are exporting and what you need to do. You can read more about those features in the user manual and system help. In this example, we'll select all of the biology records where the kingdom is Animalia using Advanced Filter. From the record menu, choose Advanced Filter. Note that it has an icon that is also on the button bar. Select Advanced Filter. In the Advanced Filter window, select the field Class 1 from the pull-down menu. The comparison is set to starts with, which is fine for us. Enter the value biology. Now click the add a new filter item link and fill in the next row. Select the field class 2 kingdom and enter the value animalia. Now click the Activate link and the filter will be activated. With the filter active, the only records that are visible are those that match the filter. Note how the record count in the lower right hand of the status bar shows how many records match the filter. They all have Biology in Class 1 and Animalia in Class 2 Kingdom. Now that you've defined which records to export, you can export the data. There are two ways to export the data. If the recipient needs a simple list of records for reference, you can use the Update My List view and the Export List to Excel function. If the recipient needs to edit the data, then return it to you to be re-imported into ICMS with updates, 
Then use import export selected fields function. We'll do export list to Excel first. If the recipient needs a simple list of records for reference, you can use the update my list view function and the export list to Excel function. From the view menu, choose update my list view. With this function, you can select the fields that show in the list. Select the fields that you need in the list on the left. Then click the Add Selected Items link to move the fields to the list on the right. The fields on the right will appear in the list pane and in your export file. In this example, we'll choose only a few fields. Catalog number, scientific name, class 1, class 2, class 3, and class 4, collection date, collector, common name, and condition. Click the Save and Activate link to add these fields to the list pane. The fields you selected are now in the list pane. Even though the columns are narrow and show only some of the data for each field, all of the data will export to Excel in the next step. Now from the File menu, choose Import Export, then choose Export List to Excel. You are prompted to select a location to save the file, and My Documents is usually a good choice. You should also change the name of the file, otherwise it will simply be named Export. Click the Save button, and the file is created. You will find the file you exported in the folder where you saved it, in this case, My Documents. You can open the file in Excel to see what it looks like. In Excel, you can press Ctrl-A to select all the rows, and from the Format menu, choose Row, then Height, and set the height to a consistent number for all rows. You can stretch the columns so more data shows. You can attach this file to email to send to the person who needs it. Now we'll export using the Import Export Selected Fields function. This is especially useful if the data you're exporting is going to be edited and then imported back into ICMS. The first step when exporting is to select the records you want to export. Remember that earlier we selected the records for biology where the kingdom is Animalia. We used Advanced Filter to do that and those records are still the visible data. Before proceeding, we'll deactivate the filter so all records are visible again. We'll sort by catalog number so the list returns to its original form. For this example, we'll select a smaller group of records. Before the lesson, I prepared a tag of only three records. These three records will serve as a template for a contract cataloger. We'll activate that tag now. From the Record menu, choose Activate Tag Set. Choose Show All Tag Sets, select the Plant Sample Records tag, and click OK. With this tag active, my visible data is now only these three records. 
Now let's export the data. From the File menu, choose Import Export, then choose Import Export Selected Fields. In the Import Export window, choose Export Records, then click Next. Choose Create New Template, then click Next. Maximize this window so it's easier to work with. Enter a template name. When we're done, this template will be saved and we can use it to export and import data. To choose the fields to export, select fields in the grid on the bottom half of the screen. Click the pull-down menu in the first column for Rediscovery field. This opens a list of fields you can choose from. Select Catalog Number from the list. Click Append to add a new row and select another field from the pull-down. For this example, we'll choose Accession Number, Class 1, Kingdom, Phylum Division, Class, Order, Family, Scientific name genus, scientific name species, object status. Location. and condition. Note that you can choose the subfields for formatted memos, such as the genus and species subfields from scientific name. This will help your collectors enter such data in Excel. Then click the Save Template link and click OK. Click the Next button to move to the next step, where you'll export the data to a file. Choose the file type ASCII CSV. This will create a file you can easily open in Excel. Click the Browse button to select a location to save the file and enter a name for it. Again, My Documents is a good place to save your files. After entering a file name, Click the Open button. Then click Next to move to the next step. This screen shows you a sample of what the data will look like when exported. Click Next to continue. Click the Start button and the records will be exported. When done, click the Finish button. The Import Export window closes and you return to the Catalog Records screen. Now you can go to My Documents, find the file, and open it with Excel. If the columns are too close together to see all the data, you can click and drag the column headers to stretch them out.
This is a feature of CSV files in Excel. Even if you save the file, it will not remember you stretched the columns. For that, you need to save it as an Excel file. In any case, the file you have exported is easily opened in Excel. This file can serve as a template for people who need to give you data to import into ICMS. Another handy function in Excel is Freeze Panes. Click the second cell in the second column. From the Window menu, choose Freeze Panes. This ensures the catalog number column and the column header row are always visible as we edit the data in Excel. Now we'll edit the data in this Excel file and re-import it. In this example, Inventory has found all three of these specimens are now in a different location. And a botanist has surveyed the specimens and assigned a new condition to them. I'll update the location and the condition for each of these records. As an example of new cataloging, we'll enter two new records. This will help demonstrate how importing can be used to add new catalog records to your database. You must fill in all of the required fields on the catalog record. You can do that by including those fields with data in your Excel file and importing them. Or you can fill them in using Modify All after the data is imported. Either way, the required fields must be filled in for these records to count as fully cataloged. Because the new records in this simple example do not have all of the required fields filled in, the object status is Draft Record. The ICMS User Manual has sections for each discipline which list the required fields for each discipline. When the file is updated, save and close it. Saving a CSV file in Excel will give you several different prompts. The first points out that there are features that are not compatible in CSV files, such as the stretched columns and the freeze panes option. Click Yes to save the file as is. Then close the file. It will ask you if you want to save the changes. This means do you want to save it as an Excel file rather than as a CSV file. You want to save it as a CSV file, so click No. Now we'll import it back into ICMS. From the File menu, choose Import Export, then Import Export Selected Fields. Choose Import Records, then click Next. Choose the file type ASCII CSV. Click the Browse button to find and select the file you want to import and click Open. then click Next. 
This screen shows you a sample of the data to be imported. Click Next. Choose to open an existing template. Then click Next. Choose the template that you use to export the record, Plant Project. We're using it again to import data. Then click Next. Choose to update the target record. This option makes sure that imported data will update existing catalog records that have the same catalog number. Click Next to continue. Click Start Import. The Track Changes window opens. This window lets you manually update the history tracking supplemental data if needed. Usually, you'll use the automatic values for these supplemental records. Click OK to proceed. At the prompt asking if you're sure you want to import the data from the file you selected, click Yes. The data is imported. The screen shows you how many records were updated and how many were added during the import. Click Finish to close this window. Now we'll look at what we accomplished. The tag of three records we exported is still active. Note on these records the location has the data we changed in Excel. On the Catalog tab, the condition also has the data we changed in Excel. The data was updated by importing the CSV file we edited in Excel. To see the new records we imported, deactivate the tag. Then scroll to the bottom of the list to see the new records. The new records were created by importing the data from Excel. Only the fields that were filled out in Excel were imported. You could quickly fill in the rest of the data, such as controlled property, status date, etc., by using Modify All Records. You must fill in all of the required fields on the catalog record. You can do that by including those fields with data in your Excel file and importing them. Or you can fill them in using Modify All after the data is imported. Either way, the required fields must be filled in for these records to be counted as fully cataloged. Because the new records in this simple example do not have all of the required fields filled in, the object status is draft record. Remember the ICMS user manual has sections for each discipline, which lists the required fields for each discipline. Here are some very important things you should check before importing data into ICMS. I'll open the file we imported to help illustrate. Catalog number must be the first column in your Excel file. Catalog number is the unique key for each record. If it is not the first column in the file you're importing, the system will not be able to match up records that need to be updated. You should also check the incoming data carefully before importing it to make sure there are no duplicate catalog numbers in the file. It's easy to sort in Excel from the Data menu by choosing Sort. Catalog numbers must be correct and in the proper format defined by your bureau or office. If you have assigned a range of catalog numbers for someone to use in Excel, check them carefully before importing the data into ICMS. Similarly, accession numbers should be correct and in the proper format before you import them. In Excel, select the columns and choose Courier New as the font. This helps you see the spacing to make sure the numbers line up. For NPS and Fish on Wildlife users, make sure the catalog number and accession numbers are in the proper format. Catalog numbers include the four-letter acronym, plus one space, plus a number of up to seven digits padded with spaces on the left. Accession numbers include the four-letter acronym, plus a hyphen, and a five-digit number padded with zeros on the left. The examples shown here are using the NPS Fish and Wildlife format. Note, if you're importing data to the Archives module, the combination of collection, series, file unit, and item numbers are the unique key. 
you should include all of those appropriate to the level you're importing to. For example, if you're importing series level records, include columns for both the collection and series numbers. The column headers in the file you're importing must match the field labels used in ICMS. Pay careful attention to punctuation, such as the period in scientific name and maintenance cycle, or the pound sign in catalog number, accession number, and collection number. The column headers must also be in the same order in your Excel file as they will be in your ICMS import template. One way to make importing easier is to remove empty columns from your import file in Excel. This reduces the number of fields you need to select for your import template and makes it much easier to spot problems with field names. Check that the data matches the ICMS standard terminology. For example, fields that are controlled by lock authority tables in ICMS should have standard terms in your Excel file. In Excel, use the data menu, filter, auto filter function to create pull down menus of unique terms. Click the pull down to view the unique terms. If you see a non-standard term in the pull down, select the term, find those records, and correct them. We are now at the end of this training. Remember to use the system help and the ICMS user manual. If you need technical support for ICMS, contact Rediscovery at the phone or email shown on the help menu under About Rediscovery.